Uh, good morning. May peace be upon you. Today lesson which I am going to talk about or we are going to discuss is learning theories. Basic concept or conceptions about learning and education theories. In fact, it consists of six videos or six lessons of short duration to understand it. So first one is basic concepts of learning dash educational theories and more common word which is used for them is the educational theories and lesser common word which is being used is learning theories. We must understand these things that there are many learning theories and educational theories. But if you analyze these learning or educational theories, then you realize this thing that there are certain orientations or approaches or learning paradigms which provide a theoretical framework that orients or directs someone to understand how someone learns. You can call them broad educational theories also, broad learning theories also, but in fact what they provide us is orientation approach or paradigm, a theoretical framework that orients or directs someone to understand how someone learns. These are five. Behaviorism, Cognitivism, Constructivism, Social, Humanistic. I again repeat, Behaviorism, Cognitivism, Constructivism, Social and Humanistic. Sometimes there is an overlap. And we can combine two approaches, two broad educational learning theories or two broad orientations into a single one, then such names will coin like social constructivism. And as the title tells, it consists of combination of two thought processes or two orientations. They are the overarching explanations under which specific learning theories or educational theories are present. Before that, what is the concept of a theory? What is a theory? A comprehensive, coherent, an internally consistent system of ideas about a set of phenomena. This was the definition given by Mankunov. Let's look at about this. Let me tell you simply what a theory is. A theory is something which provides a general explanation for observations made over time explains and predicts behavior can never be established beyond all doubt may be modified theories seldom have to be thrown out completely if thoroughly tested but sometimes the theory may be widely accepted for a long time and later disproved excellent by 1990 Dorinat excellent at all they have written the characteristics of a theory if I translate this into educational or learning theories, it means these are the explanation for the observations how students learn and how teachers teach. Explains and predicts behavior. So it means this thing. Okay, if we teach according to these theories, According to the principles which are derived from these theories, or we learn according to the principles which are derived from these theories, then learning will occur. 
can never be established beyond all doubt. This is a scientific thing. Although we are sure 99.9%, but some doubt might persist that some learning theory may be deficient in something, or some principle sometimes is not holding true. But that is very rare. May be modified. So therefore, as the time is passing, more evidence is coming in. So these theories, they can be modified in future. Or if you read these theories, when they were originally developed, you will find some difference in it. Since they are thoroughly tested and these explanations are widely accepted. So therefore, we don't throw them out completely. But as the time passes, after a long, long time, one may disapprove a theory and then that theory won't remain a theory in fact. Explanation about something, explanation about how a learner learns and teacher teaches. So therefore, theories are nothing but explanations. But explanations having characteristics which we discussed in the previous slide. Which were how we learn and teach predicts future behavior widely accepted today. I think the more important question we should come to mind, why are we concerned about educational theories? Why an individual person should be concerned, an individual teacher should be concerned about educational theories and knowing them? The problem is that a teacher may be caught in a setting where he has to teach and he has no experience how to teach before. For example, I am used to teaching, let us say, if a large group of people, and suddenly I am told to take a small group, which I have never heard, right, to teach, or I am just passing by, and the two students come, they ask me a question. Now that is a peculiar lesson for them, maybe two minutes, five minutes, six minutes. How to teach them? Then, 60 minutes, 200 students. How to teach 200 of them in such a small time? Busy OPD, very busy, patients pouring in, as occurs in third world countries, students of the standing. How to teach them? One might get puzzled. Sorry. Now the three things which can undo. I can feel like how I want to teach and start teaching them. Or usually for the good teachers in the back of the mind, you have a role model teacher which you like, which you love, because the way he taught you learn, and you try to follow that or follow him. But there is another third way also, which is better than the first two, and that is know the educational theories and dive principle from them and teach accordingly. You see, there are always two things. One is practice and theory. From theories, explanations are developed, and when these explanations are put into practice, then someone practices. This theory provides a link. If we want to improve the practice, then Theories are to be there. So 
therefore, if I want to teach well, or you want to teach well, then you have to understand the theoretical framework of these theories, because when you put this knowledge into practice, you're going to teach them well, they're going to learn better. And as one tends to continue that and that and that in society, then the theories are again modified or changed and the loop continues in development. So we reach to the end of the first lesson. In the next lesson we are going to talk about behaviorism which was the first broad educational theory or an orientation to learning and teaching or a paradigm or an approach to learning and teaching. Have a good day. May you have many more smiles. See you again.